Golden State Warriors, two Pacific Division rivals battling to get into the NBA playoffs. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Brent Musburger along with Keith Erickson. Thank you for inviting us in this afternoon. And Keith, big, big burden on the Golden State Warriors against Kareem Abdul-Jabbar this afternoon, even larger than usual. That's right, Brent. A tremendous load on Robert Parrish's young shoulders this afternoon. Clifford Ray, his number one backup man, has got a torn tendon in his calf. And E.C. Coleman was going to back up Clifford Ray today, but we had a very unfortunate bit of news this morning that Clifford Ray, uh, E.C. Coleman's mother just passed away yesterday, and E.C. Coleman will not be here this afternoon. Talk about misfortune in one family, Keith Erickson. In the last six months, E.C. Coleman has lost two brothers and now his mother, so we certainly want to pass along our condolences to the family. We are about ready to get started. Of course, you recognize number 33 of the Los Angeles Lakers. He's Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Joe Gashu and Hugh Hollins, the referees, will talk about what Al Adels told young Robert Parrish at practice yesterday, how he could work against Abdul-Jabbar. But don't get in foul trouble. That's the main thing today. And here are the Lakers. Adrian Dantley, Norm Nixon, their fine young guard out of Duquesne, teaming with the veteran Lou Hudson in the backcourt. Here's Kareem. Passing to Nixon. Ten seconds on the shot clock, and Nixon's got the Lakers ahead. Norm Nixon is really playing with a tremendous amount of confidence. He's, he was the, the third number one pick for the Lakers. He's playing like he's belonged for years. Don Ford, who has held Rick Berry down in three previous meetings this year. Berry's waiting for the cutter, goes to Ricky Marsh, the rookie from Manhattan. Cleaned off by Abdul Jabbar. And there was no one there contesting him that time for that rebound as Dantley tries to position against Nate Williams, who has replaced E.C. Coleman in the starting lineup for Al Adel. Jabbar out high. It's 4-0. That's a beautiful shot by Kareem. Didn't hit anything but the bottom of the net. Looked like he knew what he was doing on that jump shot, Brent. Very off to Parrish. Parrish, good outside shooter. He's going to try to bring Kareem out, but he's going to have to hit a couple. Very Phil Smith out of bounds. What a tremendous pass that was by Rick Barry, and he's showing a little disappointment. Look at Rick Barry. What a great shot. Ball hit Phil Smith right on the hip. Goes out of bounds. Pressuring Nixon, trying to keep him out away from Kareem if they can. They dish it off, and Bentley comes to the hole. Lakers look crisp, don't they? right here. And the Warriors have turned it over. The long pass to Lou Hudson. Smith is there. Hudson now will set it up. Kareem coming back to join the offense. Shot clock inside of 10. Knocked away and on the steal here. Smith Warriors are going to get on the scoreboard. 6-2, Lakers, 9.55 to go in the first quarter. Two finals are in. Denver beat Boston, 118-115. Washington over New Orleans, 130-111. Dantley's second shot. Now, in case they need a backup center, it's going to have to be Barry today as Williams takes a pass from Rick. So, two quick field goals for the Warriors. This is a tremendous matchup we've got this afternoon. Adrian Dantley, one of the best offensive rebounders in the league, going against Nate Williams, just about the same size and a very strong defensive player. Hudson off to Rick. Warriors can tie it. First foul of the game. Well, man, Hugh Hollins has got it. This is really an interesting. Here's Nate Williams coming off with the pass already received from Rick Barry. Lou Hudson coming through and grabbing him on the arm for the foul. It's interesting to see on that time coming down the floor, Brent, you won't see this very often. Rick Barry got the rebound, and instead of giving the ball up to the guard and filling the lane himself, he took the ball and handled the ball on the fast break. All right, Keith, here come the Lakers up by two. Ford's jump shot off. Barry alone on the other side. Warriors have been badly out rebounded their last 10 games. They came back Friday night against Phoenix and they put a victory up on the board as a result of that. Inside to Smith. Tied at six. Well, uh, that's that shows how great a player Rick Barry is. He's got to be, if not the best, one of the very best passing forwards this game has ever seen. Just waiting for a situation to happen. Phil Smith wide open underneath, not wide open. He made a beautiful pass to get it 
Backdoor, Dantley took it from Kareem. Williams fouled him on the trail. 33. Indication of the foul. I want to go back and take a look at Rick Berry, the passer. You were raving about him. We give you an isolated view from up high, and you can see just what Keith Erickson was pointing out, the precision, the patience, and the open man right there. Here now, we've got a chance for the three-point play. This young Adrian Dantley shooting the free throw, Brent, has attempted more free throws in the NBA this year than anyone else. An incredible statistic for a young man only six foot five. That free throw, Keith, put the Lakers up by three. Nine, six early in the first quarter from Oakland, California. All right, threw it back to Parrish. And that's Kareem's first foul. Another score is in. Philadelphia, 120, and the New Jersey Nets, 110. Denver, 76ers and Washington all score victories. This is a vital game for Los Angeles and Golden State. The trailing in the Pacific Division trying to get spots in the playoffs. Six teams from each conference will make it. Very wanted to go back to Parrish. He was sealed off at the baseline and travel. Watch this. I think this is an excellent Here's call. Rick Barry coming again. And the referee said that his foot hit the floor before he released the ball. Rick Barry, of course, didn't agree with him. That's what the officials for. Another score in. Kansas City beats Detroit. 110-107. All finals this afternoon. Dantley wanted it back. They've turned it over. Warriors playing good pressure defense here in the first few minutes of this game. Seattle a winner over Milwaukee. 108-103. Kareem off now to Norm Dixon in the middle. Bounce past the Hudson's a good one, but there was a whistle he traveled. Could not control it on the fly. That was a pretty pass by young Nixon. <laughs> Seattle wins again on the road. That's more pressure on the Warriors and the Lakers. Same division. Outside. Deep bounce, loose ball five. And that's on Williams. Williams is not very happy with that call. Two fouls, the reason why he's picked up in a hurry here, Keith. And again, we want to point out Clifford Ray. Oh, is he decked out on that bench over there in some red suit? Neon Ray this afternoon. Can't play because of the pull of muscle. Graham stuffs it, and there he is. You can definitely pick him up, can't you? <laughs> you sure can. would miss him. Unavailable. Out for a week for the Warriors. Barry on a quick turnaround. That's a sensational shot by Rick Barry. People don't realize how difficult that shot is. He was in the air and still had to bank the ball from a very difficult angle. Back to Nixon. And he traveled. Took a little stutter step as he hesitated on the pass. We got our first time out. Al Adels will bring the Warriors over to the bench. Situation is this. Six minutes and 48 seconds to go. And the Lakers are up by three points. Keith, let me quickly correct a mistake I made. I had Kansas City beating Detroit just the other way around, I am told. Detroit over Kansas City, 110-107 a final. Foul called as Barry was jumping out to get the pass, and he was fouled by Don Ford. Ford really tries to pressure Rick, doesn't he? Keith? He does a great job of overplaying him. Ford is indicating to the official he felt that that's not the same call that just took place down at the other end. He thought that Rick Barry ran into him. Now Hugh Hollins is telling him he better keep his comments to himself if he wants to stay in this game. Parrish comes out to meet Marsh. Nate Williams pressured by Dantley, and it went in. Not the best of shots when he released it. Had the arch, and he was dead on. Now it's a one-point L.A. lead. Nixon holds on. Hudson chases it down. Here's Kareem. Turn around on Parrish. Bounce right back to Robert. Tremendous outside jump shooter. Well, he wants it, doesn't he? One shot for the Warriors. Lakers come back. Turned it over. I'm very surprised at the way the Lakers are playing so far in this game. They're, they've got everything going for them, especially with Robert Parrish, the only center the Warriors have. They don't have to pressure anything, and they're really playing out of control out here, throwing the ball away, turnovers. Not the way Jerry West wants them to play, I'm sure. Bill Smith threw the key, gave it to Rick. Behind his back and now. 
Warriors turn it over to the Lakers and here comes Charlie Scott and Scott has not played that well since coming to the Lakers and the Boston Celtics. He just can't find a shooting touch. How do you lose a jump shot like Charlie Scott's Keith Erickson. <laughs> that's a that's a good question. Back to Scott from Kareem and he goes right back to the big man. Up high there's Parrish. I would think that as we wear on, Kareem will try to hook and back on into Parrish and get some fouls as Smith jumps from the left baseline. And if he warms up, he will apply some offensive heat. Warriors up by one with five minutes and 14 seconds to go. And Charles Dudley preparing to check in for Al Adams. Scott. Inside of 10 seconds on the shot clock. Warriors pressuring him on defense. Dantley with that strength got inside and threw the foul. And it's on Parrish, number one. And again, remember, Clifford Ray unavailable, and so too is E.C. Coleman. Watch this. Phil Smith coming down. I want to show you, point out what a difficult jump shot this is. Phil Smith sees Lou Hudson coming up on him and had to not only concentrate on the basket, but on Lou Hudson coming on his peripheral vision. A tremendous amount of concentration by Phil Smith. Flowing right to left then, Keith, as he pulled the right. trigger that time. Dantley ties the score. As Keith Erickson told you, he's been at the free throw line more than anybody in the NBA this year. You know that it's interesting Adrian Dantley sometimes on the road will not shoot as much as he does back home in the forum. Here's Barry got four to come up. Still missed it. And for the Daytona 500 Bobby Allison is the winner. Bobby Allison wins the Daytona 500 today. Barry complaining to Hollins, telling him to use that whistle a little bit more. He and Ford are battling one another pretty good. Dudley now is taking Scott inside to Dan Lane, popped it back to Ford, and Barry came out on him up on the top. Smith will try to chase it down. Went to Dudley. Lou Hudson was there. The Warriors have got it. Here's Phil Smith going after the ball. Going to try and save it. Hit. Charles Dudley with Lou Hudson coming over and knocking the ball out of bounds. Here's Big Parrish. That's his shot. Intercepted on the turnover. It's Nate Williams. These guys are, both teams, uh, Brent, seem to be rushing quite a bit. They're not really taking their time and getting into the flow of the action the way they should be. Just right there, Keith is a perfect example. And has got another turnover. There's two examples of what you're talking about. Rushing down the floor, not under control. They're not relaxed yet. There. Got both men to get off their feet and then hit it. That was a beautiful play by Rick Barry and a very nice fake. Drew both men, like you said, right by him. Nice soft touch on the jump shot. Dantley putting it down against Nate Williams. And that's three fouls, three quick fouls on Williams. So Al Adams will have to consider going to the bench if you watch it again. Watch Dantley. Now watch Nate Williams' left arm in there. You see he got caught in on, on Dantley's shirt and his chest, reaching in. That's a foul that the coaches never want to have their players commit, reaching in foul. And here's the replacement, Keith, Sonny Parker. Second year pro here for the Warriors. He played well in the game that I watched Friday night, matching Phoenix against the Warriors. Oh, Rick Barry hit 41 points in that game. Phoenix playing poorly for the first time this season. They had lost to Boston at home. Funny line by Al Bianchi, Keith. I was out with him afterwards. John Havlicek's last game in Phoenix. He said, Brent, I knew we were in trouble at the ceremony when I saw the referees crying, too. <laughs> Nixon and Barry's on the other side. Sonny Parker down left side. Dantley is there. Here's Dudley. Reverse and Kareem hooking. That's two fouls on the big man. Well, you saw Kareem's reaction to that foul. Let's watch Dudley coming down. You know, Kareem has got about a foot advantage on this play, and it looked like he just had his hand up there. It's a very difficult play to call for the officials. 
at halftime. We will have Jimmy the Greek. I don't know if we timed that right on cue. I, I really didn't expect to see my friend Jerry West pop up over there on the Laker bench, but they were reunited here this weekend, folks, and no blows were struck. <laughs> we'll, we'll, have, we'll have the Greek at halftime. Our director, Tony Vern, is anticipating my every move out here, Keith. That's a little frightening. Here now is Abdul Jabbar. Kareem backing in on courage. There is that hook shot from the low spot. I would expect to see an awful lot of that this afternoon, and especially in these next few minutes here. Kareem has got to go to work on Bob Parrish and try and get him out of the game. Here's Parrish, the man Keith was talking about. Probably a little nervous with some of the pressure on him. They put him in the starting lineup a couple of weeks ago because he was not playing well coming off the bench. Clifford Ray, on the other hand, was able to come in and help Al Adel's team keep it going, and Parrish has been better as a starter. So we'll keep an eye on him. Timeout here in Oakland, California. It's that close. One point difference, 233 left of the first. All right, 16-15, and Keith Erickson has been talking about both teams forcing the ball too much, and there's the turnover statistic. I'm really surprised at the Lakers. I'm sure Jerry West told, you know, his guys, if they just play their game, they're under control, that they're going to they're gonna be able to take this game. There is Franklin Muley, man who runs the Golden State Warriors. I think he sleeps in that cap, folks. Right down from him, Jimmy the Greek, he'll be out at halftime. We're going to talk about the St. Louis Cardinals. Who's going to be their head coach? How about... Leon Spinks, the new heavyweight champion, again, Muhammad Ali in a rematch. Who would the favorite be? We find out at halftime. Keith Erickson wants to talk about Kermit Washington. He was down to watch Washington playing with Boston in Los Angeles last week. That'll all be at halftime. Red R back on round ball about DeMantha High School in Washington. We've got a couple of players here in this game out of DeMantha, Keith. We've got a couple of teammates, Adrian Dantley and Kenny Carr, both played together at DeMantha High School when Dantley was a senior and Carr was a junior. Parrish was met there by the big man. Sonny Parker puts it in, but Abdul Jabbar hit that challenge over there. That was a tremendous confrontation about two feet above the rim that time, friend. Scott glides in. If you lose the jump shot, go to the layups, 2-0-3. <laughs> and Charlie Scott is just quick enough and just smart enough to do that, too. Lobs out of bounds. Bad pass on the turnover. Here come the Lakers. Good crowd on hand. Even though the Warriors have been inconsistent this year, they've drawn well here in Oakland. Inside the Ford, pressure and Perry blocked it. Quickly to Dudley. Now here's Parrish. Now he's getting that shot. Of course, that time he was down the court in a hurry, but Kareem has not had to come out. If he hits a couple of them, he's going to bring Kareem out a little bit. And when Kareem comes out, then it's going to open up things inside. Crowd disagreeing here with the foul call against the Warriors. And that's two against Parrish, and that is so vital. They worked about a half hour at practice yesterday. And when Perry sets a pick, he has been told by Al Adels, don't move those shoulders, don't move those elbows. And that time, he tried to pop out and deny Kareem the pass. If Parrish has to go out for a while, Rick Berry will be the center. Here's Charlie Scott throwing the ball into Kareem. Parrish going up and trying to knock the pass away from Kareem. It, you know, Brenda, it didn't look like it was a foul to me, but on the other hand, I'm sure Al Adels is telling him not even to go up like that with the, even the possibility of picking up the foul. A free throw by Kareem put the Lakers up by one. Again, Ford did a good job on Perry that time. Couldn't get the shot off, and here's Parrish. Kareem cleans it off. Smith is there. Gantley caught it. And Adels said he traveled when he caught the ball. There was no call. Gantley coming inside. Sonny Parker there. The foul is called. Now listen to the crowd. Phil Smith knocked the ball a little bit away from Dantley. Dantley turns around here and tries to take the ball to the basket. Now watch Sonny Parker here, number 22 on your screen. There, Dantley taking the ball to the hoop. Didn't really look like he was. He fouled the man on that play. Now, Kareem is going to go out for Robish, and Hudson also checks in. Al Adels will immediately respond here and try to get Parrish a rest. At least 
That was the strategy yesterday before the unfortunate death of E.C. Coleman's mother. Yes, Parrish has gone to the sideline. So now we will be able to set the matchups as the youngster gets a rest. I think they're going to stick Wesley Cox, who's six foot six, against Dave Robish, who's six ten. They come down on offense, and it is Wesley Cox in the hole. Robish takes him at the Lakers' defensive end. Cox took it back from Dudley, battled his way to the basket. Well, that's an extremely difficult shot to make. Stolen by Smith. The Warriors can go ahead here. Knocked away by Scott. Warriors will have the ball. Now these fans very unhappy about that. They, what they felt was a ticky tack at the other end. And a beautiful pass by Phil Smith. A heads up play getting the ball into Sonny Parker before the Lakers were prepared. Lakers trailing by a point. And it is Cox battling Robish. Way off on that shot. Barry's pass to Smith's a beauty. And Ford got there to knock it out of bounds. Well, Phil Smith really got hit in the face that time by Charlie Scott, and it was really an unintentional play by Scott. You just see, watch Smith catch this ball now and try to take the ball around Scott to the basket, and there Charlie got him. And, of course, you see the official on the other side of the play. The, the fans are really reacting. The official was in no position to see that play. He was in the right position. It's just one of those things that happens. Smith was hit high on that face before he ever got the shot off. Now, take a look at what Keith Erickson was telling you. It's a beautiful pass. Now watch where the official is over on the left-hand side of the screen. There's the hand. That's the blow right there. And Robich and Ford have completely screened off Joe Gishu. And this is a time when you really want a foul call because whenever somebody is hurt, I know in football, officials are so concerned about a punter, for instance, breaking a leg on a blocked punt and not having the flag thrown for roughing the kicker. When there's an injury, you have to be so careful. That's right. So this is the importance of the officials in this game, too, Brent. It's really important for an official to see what's going on out here, to see, to admit that he might have missed the play, and to really be heads up from there on, instead of saying, hey, you know, just back off from me. You can't talk to me. You know, I saw the play. I suppose that that play might be a pretty good plug for the third official, which they are considering in the NBA. They talked about it at the All-Star Game in Atlanta. Here's Ricky Green, the rookie from Michigan. He was checked in. He'll work in the back row with Dudley. That's the time left. Because they were inside at 24, the shot clock doesn't even start. Now both both teams at this point are, are a little unhappy with the way the officials are calling what you would call the ticky tack fouls that time Lou Hudson got called for just touching the player on his hip as he was moving but it's important that the officials let these guys know that they're in control out there and they can't let this game get out of hand and of course the obvious criticism there by a ball player would be look you knocked the guy out and there was no whistle and now we get something without much harm and we get the whistle pressure Parker and Cox are all over four this time runs out on the first quarter good defense by the Warriors didn't give the Lakers a chance to get the last second shot out entertaining first quarter here in Oakland Golden State Warriors lead Los Angeles by a point Dr. Robert Albo the team physician for the Golden State Warriors has just passed along the word that Smith is bothered by some blurred vision you can see where he caught it there in the left eye he was coming down. It was accidental. Charlie Scott trying to get a hand over. Slow him up. Warriors with the ball. We start the second quarter. They lead the Lakers by a point. Dudley Green, Parker, Cox, and Berry come down on Hudson, Ford, Scott, Robich, and Dantley. Berry hits, and now Rick has scored a total of six. He came out in the beginning of the second quarter, put one up right away. He only took three shots in the whole first quarter. Robich wanted the back door, and Parker cut off Dantley. Cox muscling against oh. Robich. Take it off by Dantley. Up on the top, it'll go to the... Isn't that something? Adrian Dantley hit seven straight free throws in the first quarter, and then on the layup, couldn't get it down. He is just unbelievable around that basket. He just has a nose for the ball. Keith, why was he traded twice? 
<laughs> That's a very difficult question, Brent. I, and I don't think Adrian Bentley knows the reason for that. He was very surprised at being traded. Every time I see him, he looks terrific. Here's the board, knocked back out, and stepped on the line. And Barry couldn't believe it. It's going to go back now to the Lakers. And Holland's warning Barry one more time. Look at here. Now, Rick Barry was way on the outside, tipped the ball to Sonny Parker. We could, we really couldn't pick up his foot on that play to see whether he's out. Dudley goes down in the collision. Offense is the call. It'll go to the Warriors. All right, let's let's check that play again. Now, let's watch Sonny Parker down here. Rick Barry knocks the ball from Don Ford. Let's watch Sonny Parker down here on the baseline. Let's see if we can pick up his foot down below. Here comes the camera down. Looks like bounds. he was in. That's it, right. Keith? That's three fouls that have been called now against Lou Hudson. And on that turnover, here are the Warriors. Sonny Parker short. Off quickly comes Norm Nixon. You like Nixon, don't you, Keith? Oh, he is some great, tremendous rookie, I'll tell you. He's playing with so much poise out there. He's the leader of this Laker team, just doing a great job. Basket by Scott, his second layup. Missed on an outside shot. Cox is out there with a pick. I must clarify when I say leader, you know, I mean uh, the, the leader as far as the guard handling the ball. Everybody knows that Kareem is the leader. Bentley gives the Warriors one shot. Here's Scott. Lakers trail it by a point. Robish with control. And the Lakers. Jump back into the lead, 27-26 with 10 minutes to go in the first half. The Warriors playing without Clifford Ray, without E.C. Coleman to give. Dudley just came around the screen and went right to the basket. That's what happens when you don't have Kareem in the ball game, and the players really expect him to be there. You know, Dave Robich is a, is a fine backup center, but he just can't do all the things that Kareem does. Back and in, and Barry stayed right with him. Jump off. Good defense by Barry. Good secondary defense by Rick Barry. The first phase of it was very poor. You can't give a good ball player like Adrian Dantley, one who loves to move around the basket inside, you can't give him position where he's got it down here with the ball. Rick Barry should have kept him outside, but right here, he makes up for it and makes a, a fine play on the ball. Excellent point, because normally Barry will try to take a spot away from you, and that time he didn't against Adrian. Keith, you checked on Rick Barry's line so far in this game. Looks impressive. It's very impressive. He's got two assists, three for five from the field, and he's got seven rebounds already in this game. And that, of course, is where he has to help out today. Here they come, the Warriors. Parker can fly. Sonny Parker has got tremendous physical talents, as you just saw on that beautiful fast break slam dunk. Warriors up by three. Robich as Kareem waits for the call from Jerry West to re-enter the contest. Dudley got it off the green. They won't let Kareem sit much longer with the Warriors putting together a run. Here he comes. Coats off. He has just stepped out of that telephone booth. Ford off. Parker had sealed off Dantley that time. It's all set. Rick Barry off. Parker coming back. Loose ball foul call. Three fouls on Parker. Here's Cream. And immediately Parrish will respond. Here he is. Al Adels will make his move with Robert Parrish depending upon how Jerry West handles Kareem. Al says, I don't have to worry about resting Perry. She's 23 years old. He can play all night. Look at Leon Spinks. He fought all night Wednesday night. Interesting game of chess going on out here between these two coaches. Ooh, that's Ooh, not a good I'll play by you. Perry. Perry's going to have to be careful on that. Abernathy off. Perry cleans up off quickly. Here's that athletic ability of Parker coming down the wing quickly. Kareem seal up that middle. Warriors working at the perimeter. Five seconds on the shot clock, and Kareem gives him but one shot. Five.
five-point warrior lead the Lakers are looking at. Abernathy makes it three. This Tom Abernathy is quite a player. Jerry West doesn't use him. Tom doesn't have as much minutes as, as a lot of these guys coming off the bench. But I'll tell you something, whenever the game is on the line, Tom Abernathy is in there. Parrish is backing up into Kareem, and that was something else Adels told him. I don't want any offensive fouls. Green off the weave, pops the jump, a little flat. Charlie Scott in the middle, and here's Nixon. Scott inside has been excellent. We're gonna have a timeout. Carr and Smith is all right, and you can see that he's up. So that when we come back to Oakland, he'll be checking in. And a reminder, next Friday night, 11.30 Eastern Time, Fight Night, Harrison Tone on CBS. It's a shame Clifford Ray couldn't find a little red, isn't it, Keith? I think Tony Vernon loaned him that suit. <laughs> That's something that a television director would wear, right? <laughs> you better believe it. <laughs> All right, Warriors have got the ball. It's 32 31. They got a one point lead. We've got seven minutes left to the half. We'll check in with Jimmy the Greek. Smith comes up on the turnaround. Green battling, and Abernathy runs the loose ball down. Nixon back into Kareem. Now maybe they're going to work, and popping out that time was Cox. Shot clock inside, 10. Nixon. Parrish with control. Carr is out there against Cox, and Carr gets the rebound for the Lakers. So L.A. can move ahead. Back to Nixon and off quickly to Scott. Foul is called. Smith was there. Phil Smith, I'm sure, Al Adels let Phil know the problems that Charlie Scott had been having with his outside jump shot. So Phil should really not have been anywhere near, as you see Rick Barry coming in here, Phil shouldn't have been anywhere near the position where he would foul Charlie on his outside jump shot. Good idea to check in on the fouls right now. Three on Williams, Hudson, two on Nixon, Parrish, and Jabbar. And of course, the two most important are the centers, Parrish and Abdul Jabbar. Particularly critical for the Warriors who are without the injured Clifford Ray and E.C. Coleman, who had to go home because of the unfortunate death of his mother last night. Warriors present Dudley, Barry, Parrish, Smith, and Parker on the attack. Smith from behind. Parrish was off, and Kareem cleans it out. Now it's the Lakers. Nixon, Scott, Abernathy, Carr, and here comes Abdul Jabbar. Five on five when he sets up. Just hasn't been that much of an offensive presence, though, so far as a shooter. He's gone to the other side. Maybe we'll see that hook. Here it is. Uh oh. Line him up time for Kareem. Yeah, that's one of the prettiest sights in basketball, isn't it? As far as the Los Angeles Lakers are concerned. I'm sure the Warriors aren't happy to see it today. Traveling by Parrish. Let's go back and take a look at what Keith Erickson was pointing out. I, too, for the size, 7-2. He's so graceful when he turns around and just sort of flips that ball up. That's really beautiful. Parrish jumping out on him that time. Gambled on the interception. He'll stay with the Lakers. Robert Parrish is going to have to stop doing that. He's got to realize his value to this team. And, and you know, one little steal isn't going to make this game right here. Parker touched that pass. Lakers still with possession. Five minutes and 24 seconds, 35-32. Lakers leading the Warriors by three. This is quite a matchup out here. Charlie's got him, Phil Smith also. Back to Scott from Kareem. Off on the layup, and Carr comes up with some meaning that time. Ken Carr has got tremendous physical abilities. There was Paris trying to get the rebound, and he just backs off smartly and lets Kenny Carr just slam that ball through on the rebound. Lakers go up by five. So Barry puts it up, and he's way off on that shot. Nixon in behind Parrish. Kareem is not down at the offensive end yet. Now Scott outside. <laughs> And it's going to be a timeout. 
I wasn't sure whether we were going to have a technical foul called on Rick or a timeout, but it was a timeout. 4.42 to go in the first half, a seven-point lead by the Lakers. Keith, the Los Angeles Lakers have run off a string of 12 straight here. What was the time left in the second quarter when the Warriors hit their last field goal? 9.05 on the clock. They've gone quite a while here without a point on the board. 4.36. Parker seal off. Look at they're just moving the ball around on the outside. They're really not getting any penetration, any movement inside. Darius turned it over to Abernathy. That's 14 straight for the Lakers. It was 32-27. Now it's 41-32. 4-10 to go in the half. Smith ends the streak at four minutes. Well, that's a five-minute drop. Hit by Parrish, and now it's Dudley. Warriors need some rebounds to get the running game of theirs working as Parker wheels around on Nixon. Two in a row now for the Warriors. 41-36. Five-point L.A. lead. Scott. Charlie Scott says, look what I found. This thing's been gone since last summer. I don't know why I left it, but all of a sudden it's back. It got so cold in Boston, it just froze up out there, didn't it? <laughs> there he's put it down, and Carr blocked it, but to Parker. Now three minutes left in the half. Picked up by Parrish, and Carr dribbled the turnover out of bounds off his knee. Now it's the Warriors. 248. You can pull to within three. Barry. Off on the shot. Nixon runs it down and goes to Kareem. Back to Nixon. Almost had the offensive tap. It was Parrish. High arch out. Off to Nixon. Smith is there. Abernathy. 208. Seven point LA lead. Golden State is going to have to settle down here and start just getting good shots, start getting some movement to the basket, not these outside jump shots from about 20 feet. They will stay with the Warriors. Kareem couldn't save it. Pressure from Kareem caused Parrish some trouble. Went deep to Parker. Parrish is shot. That high arching turnaround. Those long arms. Get it up over Abdul Jabbar. At 140, it's a five point lead. Come on. Kareem is off. Now the Warriors. Blind pressure. Kareem is slow and coming back. Sonny a Parker. Sensational tip by Sonny Parker. He really goes to the boards. He's just a tremendous athlete. He can run and jump. He's a great addition to this team. Green turned around. Parker down with a rebound. Sonny Parker showing us something off the Dudley to the hole. Ball is called. I want to go back and show you Sonny Parker. Here he is, the shot from the corner. Now watch the position he maintains, the timing of that jump. Listen to the crowd as Parker goes out for a breather. They ignited the Warriors here at both ends. 45-42.
Parker down and Cox is in and Dudley is at the line. Now it's a two point game 45 43. So just when it appeared as though the Warriors were going to be blown out of here back they came Keith. Well, they got it together a little bit. Of course, when you got a guy like Parker going to the hoop, hit a couple of jump shots, offensive rebounds are really important in this game, and that's what he did. One-point game right now. Scott outside. Back to three, and Charlie Scott is finding the touch here this afternoon in Oakland. Four seconds. Lakers cannot completely run out the clock for the last shot. They're up by one. Kareem out for a high pick and roll back. Wanted it. Off his hand. Ford hustles out. Nixon. That's one of those things that happens. The Warriors played great defense that time. Forced it almost to turn over and they ended up getting the Lakers got an easier shot than they would have. Now down to seven seconds on the clock. Rick Barry should have an open man. He's double teamed here. And Dantley's got it on the turnover at the buzzer. The end of the first half here in Oakland, 49-46, a three-point lead by the Lakers. Red Arback on DeMatha High School in Washington is next. It's still got chance, but it's going to be very tough. All right, we start the second half in Oakland, California. The Golden State Warriors trailing by that margin. They've got the basketball right now. Rick Barry matched against Ford. Nate Williams is out there. Parrish, Phil Smith, and Ricky Marsh. Barry with the second half first shot. Now we'll set the Lakers for you. Nixon and Hudson, Dantley, Abdul Jabbar, and Ford. Clifford Ray unavailable because of an injury. E.C. Coleman unavailable because of the unfortunate passing away of his mother last night. Abdul Jabbar's hook shot. He took only eight shots in the first half. Missed here with his first in the second. Smith gliding to the basket. Technical foul. Phil Smith was battling Joe Gashu as they came back. Smith was protesting, and Gashu reached the midcourt line and said, I've had enough. <laughs> and Smith might be paying for the sins of some of his teammates and some of the Lakers early on in this game, too. That's right. Uh, you know, you, you hold these things in so long, and you just have to say something to the official that you know you're going to get a technical call for. There's an interesting stat here, Brent. Last year in the NBA, $71,550 was paid out by these players and coaches in technical fines. How much? $71,550. They paid that too, right? Huh? Lawrence <laughs> O'Brien. I, I don't he know if that was collected. The whole office. <laughs> Here's Nixon now. Back that that was assessed. <laughs> Kareem backing in. Hey, he wants it a little bit more here. That's two quick shots and hit the second one and put the Lakers up by five. Third quarter, Friday night is fight night on CBS. Harrison Tona, two fine middleweights. Barry should have had it. Blew the layup. Nixon. Ford goes right back to Norman. Parrish comes down. Now five on five. Smith got it up over Kareem, who was extending as he came across. That's a tremendous shot by Phil Smith. At the last second, he saw Kareem coming over. He had to put that ball up real high and a beautiful soft touch to make it. There's Kareem again. I'm sure a lot more life here early in the second half than he did in the first, Keith. I was going to say I'm surprised that he didn't do that more in the first half, and I'm sure that he's going to be doing it more in the second. to Nate Williams. Dantley cleans it up. Parrish unhappy underneath. Loose ball foul. Dantley was coming up on Marsh. That's the call that should have been made at the other end of the floor. Now, Marsh
Marsh was there. Hold on. They get this squared away over at the table. That's on Marsh. Ball stays right there with the Lakers. Didn't he? Smith down quickly. It's two on one, and Smith trying to go by Nixon, and Nixon foul. There's Phil Smith bringing the ball down. Norm Nixon on him. Comes over and tries to steal the ball, and then Norm Nixon sees that Smith is going to make the layup and just tries to prevent Phil from getting the shot up at all. 9.24 to go in the third with Smith at the line and the Warriors trailing. 54 to 48. Golden State Warrior team it's interesting point Brent they are the team with the fewest free throw attempts in the league which would indicate what Keith that they're not putting the ball on the floor and driving to the basket that's or what? exactly right they're not taking the ball to the hole and, and like Adrian Dentley they're not getting many offensive rebounds and putting it up inside most of their stuff is Green, on the outside Green drew a foul from Parrish that's three Now this is an interesting play. Let's watch Robert Parrish just stands there and tries to hold his position completely, and which he did. It's very difficult for us to see from that angle what the official was calling on that play. But Joe Gashu was right there and called the foul on Robert Parrish. Keith, I think you meant to say that the Boston Celtics were about 13 games below 500 there it was somewhat confusing when you were running down the Eastern Conference playoff teams I was That's rushing right. you yeah I mentioned uh, what I said was they were behind Atlanta and New Orleans 13 games when actually I meant that they were just behind uh, below 500 12 games Houston 13 games actually it looks like Boston's about three and a half behind Atlanta and New Orleans tied you know, I wish the wire service, this Associated Press and UPI, at least once a week would send out conference standings rather than division because that's what you have to take a look at when you consider the playoff matchups. And it would be so much easier for everyone if we could take a look at them in the papers that way. Maybe they'll do that. 8.58 to go, 56.48 right now. Smith puts it down, sealed off. Kareem came there and Hudson picked his pocket. Williams over on Ford. They swing back to down. Warriors are keeping the Lakers from getting an easy shot of this sequence. Finally, they go inside, and Adrian Dantley underneath. Clock is stopped now. The Hollins runs it down. That was a beautiful pass by Kareem, getting it inside to Dantley, who had good position on Rick Barry again in the key. Rick should never have let him get down in there. Well, Dantley loves to operate down low, doesn't he? Williams turns around on Adrian, misses. Kareem couldn't hold on, and Parrish is there. Parrish was not about to challenge the big guy. He didn't want to take it all the way to the hole. He came up with that jump shot early on in this game. They met at the summit, and Kareem stuffed him. Nixon turns inside of Marsh. There's Adrian. Foul called as he was coming up. First foul on Rick. And even though it's number one, he's not happy about it. That's a man in search of his first per personal foul in the history of the NBA. <laughs> but Rick, we love you anyway. What a competitor he has been, folks. Mm. Here's Dantley with eight minutes to go. Adrian Dentley has a very unique style of shooting his free throws. And watch when he when he holds the ball. Watch what he goes through here. Is he rubbing the ball down low? Got a little just very unique to himself. I've never seen another guy do that. They step over the line. That's a sloppy mistake to make at that end. He had the ball low. 7.58. Ten point difference. Now waits. They move it to Ford. Warriors 
need a run. They've gone a little flat here. Very motioning Dudley around him. Nixon comes with him, and here's Parrish, and Ford was in behind him. Nixon trying for the break. It'll go back to the Warriors. Robert Parrish, see Don Ford came behind him and stripped him of the ball, going up on the jump shot. And then the ball was knocked off of Nixon's leg out of bounds. Keith, the, the Warriors can't seem to get moving here. They're holding the ball a little bit too long, letting defensive players come in behind them. Here's Rick. See, that's the reason. Right? They're taking everything from the outside. They're just they're perimeter passing the ball. They're not moving inside, getting anything at all inside. L.A. up by 10. Came in with one more victory than the Warriors and two fewer losses. Smith picking up that foul. Lakers 29, 27 on the year, and the Warriors 28 and 29. That last foul by Phil Smith is indicative of a team that's not playing good defense with their feet. They're they're reaching in a lot, like Robert Parrish just did on Kareem again. You've got to play body position in this game. You can't reach in. And sliding down on Parrish, offensive foul is the call. On the turnover, the ball will go to the Warriors. We're also going to have a timeout. Here's Adrian Dentley coming down to the baseline. Watch him swing back to the baseline this time. And the referee call. 6.59 left in the third quarter here in Oakland. Warriors will have possession. Now let's see Keith the Val Allos. Got the moving with that timeout. He has not. Here come the Lakers on the turnover. So often in the NBA, you'll see a team go out and score right after a timeout. Diagram of play. Natley left open. Parrish came over. Sonny Parker got on the other side of him. Robert Parrish is complaining that Dantley used his left arm to push Parrish away and take the ball to the basket that time. Adels is going to turn to Nate Williams. You can see them checking, and Williams dropping the jacket off. Smith. Green looking for the outlet. Hudson. Sweet Lou. I'd say that's a sign of a real smart ball player. There was a little bit of a, of a hole to the basket that time, but Lou knows what his shot is. It's a jump shot. He pulled up and took it and made it. Warriors having a sloppy period here in the third quarter. Dantley had it knocked away by hustling Dudley. Williams checks in. 5.49 and a 14-point difference. Smith goes back out. He was struck around the left eye accidentally by Charlie Scott in the first half. Six field goal, 526 to go in the third. Warriors face the penalty and the Lakers do not. Four team fouls on the Warriors, one on the Lakers. William, one shot. Barry was left alone. A lot of purple jerseys down there underneath the hoop, Keith. Oh, there sure were. Nate Williams took that shot a little bit too soon. He hit the shot the last time, and sometimes a player feels well. I've got it going now. You know, the only way you're going to find out if you've got it going is to put it up again. Six, Scott in the game for Jerry West. Parker jumped out on him. And offensive foul is the call against Charlie Scott. His first. Parker, who can also play forward and did in the first half, is now in the backcourt, and that's why West countered with Scott's side. Here come the Lakers. Nixon in the middle. That lay, but no. Offense. Watch 
to Norm Nixon now coming down. What the coach wants him to do is stop at the free throw line. And you see Nixon coming on, taking the ball to the basket. It was knocked out of his hands by Sonny Parker and runs right into Nate Williams, the offensive foul, with the official in perfect position to call the play. Very gliding through. Foul called as he tried to get to the basket. like a pretty good play by Norm Nixon uh, having position down there but that's where Rick Barry the superstar comes into play where the official you know just couldn't call that foul on the rookie Nixon they didn't get Barry to the free throw line of the first half he's working on a string of about 44 straight here he is outside right to Dudley wanted Barry bad pass cross court high not only did they not get Barry to the free throw line in the first half but the Golden State Warriors have only shot eight free throws so far in this ball game. have made four. The Lakers are 16 for 16. Brad Davis, 30 on the floor. Sonny Parker stole it. Stayed right with it. Drew the foul. Scott picks up two in a hurry. Boy, he's got athletic talent if they can ever get him under control. This is an incredible play, Brent. Watch it. The man came around underneath, underneath the basket, turned around in the air while he had the ball. An incredible shot to put back up was fouled by Charlie Scott on the play. He's out of the Chicago high school system, as is his teammate Ricky Green, who went to Michigan. Played in the City League there. Keith, you and I will be in Chicago next weekend. It's the Portland Trailblazers and the Chicago Bulls. Full schedule of regionalized games on CBS. Tuesday night, Celebrity Challenge of the Sexes. Friday night, Tona and Harris. Saturday's the Spectacular, and Sunday it's the NBA. We'll see Ricky Green soon. says give me a timeout what is this all about we got a big lead and we run the shot clock out that was very interesting play Hugh Hollins the, the, the official underneath the basket called the, the, the basket no good and the referee Joe Gashu right in front of us signaled two points with his fingers said it would have been good Hugh Hollins <laughs> overruled it Youngest season ticket holder of the Golden State Warriors saying, I want some offense. My team's only scored six points. Let's get it going out there. Hey, there's Crowley Davis with the white bow, the pretty woman. That's the wife of Al Davis. Runs the Oakland Raiders. We were over at his home last night and had dinner with him. He had films of the Pro Bowl and the Super Bowl, coaching films. He's sitting over there studying both of those games. He says, I'd have done better against the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> he, what a football man. Parrish now turning around on Kareem. Here come the Lakers. the night against Boston these Warriors could score only 25 points in the second half and as Charlie Scott puts down another one for the Lakers they wound up that night Keith with 75 points at home and they've been held to six points here in this quarter with 310 to go in the third somebody just took the life out of them well, they're really not running their offense very well at all They're, as we've said many times that's the shot that they've been getting all night long and when that happens you see the big guy get the rebounds and that's what happens to it well it passed to Dantley. Sixty-eight to fifty-two. The Lakers have dominated the Warriors this season, beating them three times previously. Last couple of games by big margins. And Ricky Green. Ricky hits outside on that perimeter shot. To get some of the layups, they're gonna have to get some rebounds to get a break going, too, Keith. They've got to start taking the ball to the hole a little bit. They're just, just not running their offense. And you've got to give credit to the Laker defense for that. Davis. The rookie. Was he slowed by an injury? He missed 21 games earlier in the season, Brand. He had a broken hand, I believe. Left hand. His brother played with Milwaukee. Perry. Stepped down by Dan. Same shot, Keith, just a different personality putting it up. Scott trying to glide past Parker. 22. Foul on Sonny. 
It's starting to look like an old movie out there, isn't it? The, the Warriors just taking that same outside jump shot as you just said. Four fouls on Parker. 159, 70 to 54. Al Adels was satisfied with his team's performance here Friday night against the Phoenix Suns. Had a practice yesterday. Concentrated hard on filling in for the injured Clifford Ray. Jerry West brought his team in yesterday afternoon. They worked out briefly over here in the Coliseum. And they have played much better the last few weeks, we might point out. They've been playing great basketball. I think Norm Nixon is partly responsible for that, the way he's bringing the ball down the court on that fast break. Williams from the side. Well, their future, of course, has to depend on number 33 as to how far they'll go in the playoffs. They still revolve around that big man. Oh, that's Perry's true. jump pass. He saw Williams get in behind Kareem. Well, that's exactly what the Warriors need to do. They need to get that ball out. It started down at the defensive end where they stole the ball, came down, had a semi-fast break, and the Lakers were relaxed getting back defensively. Rick Barry made a beautiful pass for a layup, which they haven't had many of this half. Seven field goals separate the two. Fouls on Parrish, his fourth. There's Rick Barry outside. Now he sees Nate Williams underneath the basket. Jabbar was far enough away where he could had no chance to get back on a beautiful shot from up above to see Nate Williams taking that ball to the hole. The fourth foul was called on Parrish, but at that moment, Jerry West decided to rest Abdul Jabbar, Robish on the floor, so consequently, Parrish gets to go out also, and Cox checks back in. So with Dantley at the line, there's that Army, a little rotation of that right hand, like he wants to get a real good grip on the grain. Has he missed a free throw yet here? No, he has not. Total of 25 points for Adrian Dantley. 11 of 12 at the line. Hit 11 in a row before he finally missed. Ford, Scott, Robish, and Davis. Across playgrounds, it will be all of these young men just rubbing that ball down, getting that feel. I tell you what, they better learn to do first is to go to the offensive boards. They won't get any of those free throws. Nate Williams with a good move. They're expecting to shoot that jump shot. He couldn't put the layup down on it. That's Brad Davis gliding in. Pretty move. That's what brought him into this league. He can do that as well as anybody. Penetrate, get inside, and then kick the ball off if the opportunity isn't there, but it was there that time. I know a lot of scouts, Keith, who think that long range, Brad Davis gonna be a star in the NBA because of that quickness, things he can do for you. Off the floor, just one shot. Chase down, Warriors battling to get it back. Loose ball is the call. On Cox, number 41. 11 seconds left in a quarter that the Golden State Warriors will love to forget. Seventy-six fifty-eight is the count. Be interesting to see at this point what the Warriors will do as they come down with 11 seconds. You'd think they're going to go to Rick Barry to get that jump shot and see how the Lakers defense this play. Back to Davis. Looted Scott goes to the Warriors with seven seconds. There's Cox, there's Barry. Jump pass to Green. So the best two plays the Warriors turned in were those passes by Rick Barry. One to Williams and now here to Green. Otherwise, it was all the Los Angeles Lakers. So that's the end of the third quarter with the score 77 to 60 Lakers. We now pause for a word from your local stations.
the conclusion of this game and Keith Erickson there's the man with the big lead Adrian Dantley scored 24 points first three quarters missed but one free throw 11 of 12. Start off with a huge 17 point margin. Wesley Cox, the Warriors need a run. They'll see if they can get it going right now. Ricky Green wanted Sonny Parker, but I was most impressed by the way he got that penetration done that time as Al Adels looks on. He'd love to see some men closing in from the wings on that play. Regains it off to Barry. Barry left. Cox. Strong. Very strong. Good offensive rebound, and that's what the Warriors need. They've got to start going to those boards, the offensive boards. Now Keith must play some defense if they're going to battle back. Dantley blocked off by Williams. It'll stay with the Lakers. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar still resting. Dantley checking the clock. Scott wanted Robich back. Foul as he came up. That's William. Kareem watching next to Abernathy. That's four fouls on Williams. And that's the problem with letting the guys like Charlie Scott started that play penetrating on it and then they all collapsed inside Scott dished the ball off and Robich had it right underneath taking it to the basket then they are reaching in again what you want to do is keep them outside not let them penetrate not let them get the ball down inside and on the other hand that's what the Warriors have got to do the Warriors can't afford to waste any time on getting that ball back in bounds in any situation now 79 62 Here's Cox. Wesley Cox of Louisville. And that's what Al Adels is looking for, somebody to get hot out there. Wesley Cox has just hit two in a row. I wouldn't be surprised to see Adels go to him again this next time down. Robish coming up. Davis cutting green off. Robish switches over on Barry. Short this time. Robich gave him but one shot, and here's Davis. Good pass to Dantley. Warriors can't trade baskets for long. Parker forces one up on the turnaround. One at the foul. Lead to Ford. the strength of these Los Angeles Lakers. That's their ball game. Getting out and running with it and especially the strength of Brad Davis. He can really pass that ball. He can see Don Ford taking that ball to the hoop. Nine minutes and 50 seconds to go. Los Angeles in command. In the second half, Rick Barry is 0 of 6 from the field. He was 4 of 9 in the first half. So his problems against Don Ford and the Los Angeles Lakers continue this season. Roby switched off and went back to Parrish. Here's his seventh shot, one for seven. On the board for the first time this half, 9.30 to go, 85-66. Rick Barry had a very interesting reaction after he made that shot. Lifted up his hands and he said, hey, where's it been? Finally, about time. Robich inside of Parrish. I'll tell you something, I've seen him be awfully cold for great periods of time and then warm up and bring this crowd alive. I've seen him do more than warm up in situations like that. He can get very hot. Scott. Cox has got Rick. It's three in a row and he was fouled by Davis. Six quick points by Barry. And Kareem will be coming back soon. Watch this beautiful pass by Cox. That's really a heads-up play, looking at the other end of the floor, checking if a man is there, and lo and behold, Rick Barry was there. 
Well, Barry used to be able to dunk that shot, right? <laughs> a great jumper he is not, no longer. <laughs> <laughs> no longer is right. <laughs> a great free throw shooter he is. There he though. is. He's working on that streak. What is it, Keith? 44 in a row? That's right. 45. He rattled the rim. He gave us a little excitement that time. I don't think he counts those when they hit the rim. <laughs> Kareem is back. So too is Nixon for the Lakers. Down to 14. Kareem hooks it up. Bounce is not there, and Wesley Cox muscles up. 8-23. Crowd senses a possible surge. Barry, three quick hoops. Coming up on Ford. Whistle. And for Ford, how many has he got? Only two guarding Rick Barry. Boy, he's done a clean job, hasn't he? Playing off him very well there. Now watch, see, Rick started to get by him, and Ford just reached in with his right arm and grabbed him, kept him from going to the basket. Nixon with Green. Lots of time on the shot clock, but that's a dangerous pass, and Scott just stepped there. It was a little lazy move, but it, the offense is the call that coming the other way. No, he signaled he made the basket. Right. He's coming up. Here's Charlie Scott. Hesitates and then takes the ball to the basket. That's a good, smart play by Charlie Scott. You see Barry hitting Scott on the arm. Made him change his shot a little bit. Still put the ball in the hole. Scott with a chance for the three-pointer. Look for a moment. Like they might have something going. That play could have taken a little life out of the Warriors. That's all it takes. A little turnover. Great game of streaks, isn't it, Keith? Oh, tremendous. Even you watch teams win and lose in streaks in this league. Particularly if you're at home, can you win? Green out. Nixon. Off to Ford. Barry's back. Ford senses he can go. Well, he took a shot there on that. And no foul. Old Chicker and saying, no harm, no foul. <laughs> Looks to me like it's no blood, no foul on that play. Knox came up. Adrian. Stan Albeck next to West. There's Jerry talking to Charlie. You mentioned Chick Hearn. There he is in the background, the longtime voice of the Los Angeles Lakers. And a friend of yours working with him, being blocked out by Jerry West, Pat Riley. You think Jerry's doing that on purpose? Sure. Pat out of the screen? Sure, there he is. He took that TV time away from <laughs> Pat Riley there. And right next to Pat Riley, the Laker publicist, Shep Goldberg. 720, 89, 73. You mentioned all those Lakers should get free tickets the rest of the year, Eric. Soon as Ford hits one outside. <laughs> 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 it is Kareem is there. <laughs> Three fouls on Kareem. Watch, watch Robert Parrish take the ball. Watch Kareem the way he plays defense here, like a defensive end with his elbows out, right into his shoulder. He's not going around the line. Stayed with it. Cox. That is shot intimidated. It'll go to the Lakers. We've been talking about Adrian Dantley in his last three games. He's averaged 27 points, eight rebounds. He's shot 59%. Of course, we've already told you he's the league leader in free throws attempted, and he's played extremely well for Los Angeles here today. He's been the leader. Out of Notre Dame by way of Buffalo and Indiana. No longer shoveling snow as Kareem whoops in the old hook shot. Lakers have won two in a row, six of their last seven. Barry outside. That's a great play by Charles Dudley there. That's what they need to do is get some penetration. Dudley drove down the middle, drew Rick Barry's man. Barry has the open jump shot. Locking foul call. Watch Scott as he comes in with Parker. Parker is a very quick player, by the way, and Scott went right by him. And Cox did not have position on that play. Good call by the official. Nixon. Nixon had Kareem right in front of him on that play and said, hey, what do I have to go into you for? He said, well, I've got this automatic jump shot right here. 
I'll tell you something, Keith. The Los Angeles Lakers could be an awfully good team if Kareem plays strong down the stretch and in the playoffs. No question about it. He can turn that team into a, a world championship team. Yeah, he makes the difference. There's no question about it. We'll see the Walton gang next Sunday in Chicago. World champion Portland Trailblazers. Back to Scott. Barry was there and he forced one up. 543. Barry outside. Off to Nixon. Quickly to Ford. They're working well coming down and filling those lanes, aren't they? Don Ford is one of the best big forwards in the game coming down and filling that fast break lane. And he's a favorite target of Norm Nixon's. There's the roll, the left-handed shot. We're going to give it to him, and he drew the foul. Green picking up four as Williams checks back in. I believe Williams has four also, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Now we'll take a look at Carr. We'll take a look at Abernathy. Jerry West also has some depth on this Los Angeles team. Yes, he does. You know, you mentioned about Kareem and being able to take this team to the to the World Championship. Kareem is such a great player. He didn't have the cast last year that he has this year, and he took the team to the best record in the league. Nobody felt that they had a chance to go all the way, but this year, with the group of guys he's got with him, they can definitely go all the way. Keith, here on the West Coast, right after this game, it'll be Challenge of the Sexes. Then the West Coast audience will get to see the world champions, the Portland Trailblazers, Bill Walton, Maurice Lucas. They're going to be matched against Indiana. The rest of you, of course, have already seen the first game, and so this is your second game this afternoon. Didn't Tony Verna have a big hand in that challenge of the sexes? I think he did. Now, five minutes and 20 seconds to go. 97-77. Lakers over the Warriors. Lob to Kareem. Good inside power move. The versatility of the seven-foot-two Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. You talk about some playoff matchup possibilities. Mm. Look at Kareem. that. He's having fun out there now, isn't he? Scott off to Kareem. He's making a late charge for the Chevrolet <laughs> Most Valuable Player. He wants a grand for UCLA. He says Notre Dame's not getting it. <laughs> Scored for Parker. Watch Kareem down here. So Scott passes the ball off to him. He turns all the way around and goes up very easily and just dunks that ball. Next too many guys. Down quickly, Keith. Don't let the Lakers get up on you. Look at this. Parker. And some of them start slowly heading for the aisles here in Oakland, California. This Coliseum, of course, is right next to the other arena with the Oakland Raiders and the Oakland A's. And there's so much talk out here in the Bay Area about what's going to happen to that baseball situation. Turns out that there's a clause over there with the San Francisco Giants that they may be allowed to leave town if they don't draw well next year. Well, it's a red hot topic. Most people feel that this area will support one team very well and not two. And of course now New Orleans has jumped back in the picture and they'd like to buy the A's from Charlie Finley. Nixon left alone. 350, 105, 83. Parrish. Green doesn't have to worry about coming out right now, does he? No, he doesn't. Robert Parrish coming to life here. Hit two or three quick back buckets in a row. The last two times the team played, Brent, the Lakers beat them by a total of 69 points. And they've got it going here again. and that means that Abdul Jabbar has played for the last time this afternoon. He'll go out and relax. I think we should point out that he hasn't been feeling well the last few days either, bothered by the flu, and I noticed in the first half that he'd play in spurts more or less. That's right. It's, something like that has got to take its toll on him. You can hear him calling the four play down there. Let's see what this is. Five 
Final three minutes. Abernathy. That was a fine move by Tom Abernathy. Put it up. Robert Parrish was right there. Switched hands in the air and shot it with his left. You watch the Golden State Warriors. Seems like just yesterday I was out here and they blew the Washington Bullets out in four straight, winning two over at the Cow Palace in San Francisco to capture a world championship. And of course, you watch a game like this and you say, what in the world went wrong with this team? And then you consider they've only got a couple of guys left with Clifford Ray aren't able to play. We saw Rick Berry. We saw Phil Smith. And the rest of the team no longer with them. That's a pretty young ball club Al Adels has got over there along with Joe Roberts. And it looks like they got a lot of coaching to do. Two minutes and 35 seconds. You're watching what has become a blowout in the Los Angeles Lakers. Taking complete command in the third quarter. And the Warriors unable to get back into it. Nixon and Davis are out there together right now. So too is Carr. Laker fans get to watch the Kitty Corps work together for the Warriors. There's Green, Parrish, Parker, Williams, and Cox. So the present is over on the Lakers bench. And now you can take a look at some of their future. You got down here, baby. Watch Walter Davis of Phoenix play on Friday night, Keith Erickson. And there are several coaches in the league who feel that someday he could become the best all-around forward in basketball. I don't think you'll find too many people disagreeing with that statement. He is some fine player. I guess right now you might have to look to the north when Maurice Lucas is on his game. The way he played for the world champions. Carr put it down, slip through. Gonna get a second chance. That was a pretty impressive move to the basket there, taking it right to Robert Parrish. Green gliding pass, foul called. That's Nixon. Green at the line. Cox came up over the back of Carr. And the loose ball foul was called on Wesley with 147 to go. But with the regulars out and the game no longer in doubt, uh, I think we can go ahead and give away the Chevrolet Most Valuable Player Award, can't we, Keith? I would say so. I know how hard you wanted this money to go to UCLA, but our Chevrolet Most Valuable Player Award is going to go to Adrian Dantley. And so that $1,000 scholarship from Chevrolet is going to be awarded to Notre Dame. On behalf of A.D. One eleven eighty nine. Last minute 40. That's been the way the Warriors have played this whole game. Those shots from the outside. They're just not going to beat this Laker team like that. Robert Parrish, and you think he's got a future as a center in this league, though, Keith? No question about it. Very young man. He's only 23 years old. Back they come. Los Angeles Lakers, who are going to beat the Warriors for the fourth straight time. And Davis gave us a little showtime, and Nixon hits it. Two young rookie guards. Davis cutting back on Parker. Last 30. Bernathy. Traveling. It'll 
go to the Warriors for the final 13 seconds up there on the clock. Runs out. All over. Los Angeles 115. Oakland 93. Jerry West jubilant as he led the Lakers out, having beaten the Golden State Warriors here in Oakland for the fourth straight time. 115 to 93. And so the Lakers just keep it rolling now. Trying to move up on the standings, trying to make a run at those teams that are above them in the Pacific Division and also over in the Midwest so they can climb right back up into the playoff picture. The Lakers do not gain any ground on Seattle, but they don't lose any. And the Lakers' record now is 30 and 27. They go three games up on 500. The Warriors go two games under with that loss. They fall to 28 and 30 right now. And as we started the afternoon, Los Angeles possessed the fifth best record in the Western Conference. And they will maintain that position right there. Milwaukee was the sixth team that would have qualified for the playoffs. This drops the Warriors one loss further behind the Chicago Bulls. They came in trailing them by a game. And nice to welcome Adrian Dantley over here alongside Keith Erickson and I. And Adrian, congratulations here this afternoon. Nice job. Thank you. I think we played real well and um, we're starting to come along and we got a lot of great basketball players on this team. And you're comfortable now with the Lakers, AD? Not yet. I'm getting more comfortable as the game's going. I'm, as you know, at Buffalo and Indiana, I was used to having the ball all the time, scoring plays designed around me. Now, with the big fella here, my job is just to keep moving without the basketball. If you get any more comfortable, you'll score 100 points, big guy. You look real good this afternoon, Adrian. Thank you very much. And so, for Keith Erickson and Jimmy the Greek, I'm Brent Musburger saying so long from the Oakland Alameda Coliseum.